What's up, YouTube? IMX is launching tonight. Uh, in just a few hours from the release of this video, Trial of the Gods cards will be tradable. You can buy and sell uh, as long as you have linked your wallet to IMX ahead of time. Um, so today we're going to look at some of the top cards uh, in terms of value, uh, future value, or cards that I think are worth a lot of money right now. And the way we're going to look at this list is we're going to go to gudex.com. You can go to meta card rankings, and then you can filter down to try all the gods. You can look at different time frames, different user ranks, specific gods. You can search for cards. Check out how they're doing right now. And you can also try and guess what's going to be good in the future. So I'm going to skip over all of the back pages here that have less than 50% win rate. Doesn't mean those cards are not going to be playable in the future uh, as future cards from future sets come out and help make those cards more powerful with synergies. Um, but we're going to start, we're going to look at just some sporadic cards here on these first few pages, and then we'll look at all the cards on the first page. So cards that I think could be worth um, a lot more in the future. Um, Hierophant Selenius, Roar, your other creatures gain. Whenever this creature damages an opponent's god, copy a random card in your opponent's deck and add it to your hand. So this combined with Shadow of Lethanon um, means even just one Shadow of Lethanon. And then you play Hierophant Selenius. The Shadow of Lethanon pings your opponent's god at the start of the turn. And then you can also attack with the Shadow of Lethanon, meaning just with Hierophant and a single Shadow, you can draw two cards from your opponent's deck every single turn uh, and Shadow of Lethanon is very hard to deal with it's a very sticky card it hides itself every single turn so I think Hierophant Selenius is going to be big um, with that Brumentari Researcher uh, after you summon a Mystic deal two damage to a random enemy character every time that new Mystics come out in every new set this card becomes more and more insane it's already a ridiculously fun card to play with things like the Will-O-Wisps, which summon two Mystics uh, for two mana, um, which means it's going to deal four damage. And every other Mystic that you summon, this card just pops off. So that'll be nice in the future. Volka's Axe could be good. It's hard to say. It's down to one durability. It got nerfed. Um, all these infinite durability relics are probably going to be good at some point in some decks. So this is probably one worth owning if you're looking to build a Viking deck specifically. It gives all your Vikings plus two, plus two uh, in your entire hand and on board, which is pretty nuts. So uh, Volka's Axe, very nice. Uh, Ghost of Chariot, after a creature is summoned, gain two favor. Afterlife, if you have 40 favor or more, summon a Ghostly Chariot. So effectively, this can never die once you have 40 favor. Right now, it's kind of um, only used in niche favor type decks. But again, in the future, as we see more cards uh, giving you the ability to gain favor, this card becomes more powerful. It becomes easier for this to stick to the board if you gain more favor, and then you'll never, ever be without your Ghostly Chariot. Um, Lysander's Spear might be the best card in the game that nobody is using. Uh, after you play a light card, give it plus one durability. Ability give plus two plus two to a creature and minus two durability to this relic It's an infinite durability relic and it starts with three durability The reason this is so underutilized is because light has so many good relics already that it's hard to justify playing this relic in addition uh, You basically if you're playing an infinite durability relic You can't play other relics because they would remove your infinite durability relic so it's kind of a choice between Lysander Spear or things like the Cudgel, the Ritual Rod, the Golden Harp. Um, so this uh, is kind of underutilized right now, but I think this could secretly be one of the best cards in the game. Um, Form of Power. Deal two damage to an enemy creature and one damage to your opponent's god. So right now, this is just a one mana deal two damage. It's fine but in the future we're actually going to see new god powers when the new set starts to come out and clear mind is being changed to 4c2 your creatures get spell boost plus one until end of the turn which means if you have six creatures on board and you play clear mind 
you're going to get spell boost plus six, and then you can play a one mana form of power and deal eight damage to a creature and uh, seven damage to your opponent's god. So form of power could see a lot more utilization once that comes out. Uh, Nakfi Pillager is just a ridiculous card in Onslaught decks. You can also just use it with Intense Training decks combined with Fury, which gives this card Blitz. Anything that can give this card Blitz and also buff this card, you can drop it. Uh, it has Leech and Twin Strike, which means if it has Blitz in addition by either having Onslaught, the God Power, or Fury, the card that gives Blitz, uh, it, it gains at least one Strength. If you use Intense Training, it could be even bigger. You could basically kill two of your opponent's creatures with your Twin Strike and your Healing for 8 health at the same time while clearing out your opponent's board. This card is ridiculous. Neferu's Kopash is another infinite durability relic. After you play a death card, give it plus 1 durability. Uh, it starts again with 3 durability. And its ability is pull the creature with the lowest strength from your void to the board. Give two, minus 2 durability to this relic. So I've seen this used with Soul Jars a lot which soul jars have zero strength, so that will always be the lowest durability, or always be the lowest strength in your void, which means you can basically have infinite soul jars. When a soul jar burns up, it summons two, two, two um, creatures. And if you have things like demonic offering, which can blow up the soul jar uh, quicker, um, you can keep putting it back into your void keep getting the benefit of destroying a creature uh, all the while this thing stays equipped for eternity that's a that's going to be a nice one to have Lysander is just a big body he's got frontline and ward um, at the start of your turn completely heal this creature so if you can buff it a little bit with like a shield bearer uh, make it a 4-8 for instance and it's got ward so it's really hard to kill and it heals itself every t every single turn if you don't kill it the whole way. And after a friendly creature, itself included, is healed, it gains one strength. So if you buff it to a 4-8, it takes a little bit of damage. For some reason, it then becomes a 5-8, and it just keeps growing and growing and spirals out of control. So Lysander is pretty nice as well. Um, Student of Society is going to be a must for favor decks. So I think this card could be big in the future as well. We're always going to have favor and a sanctum, so we're always going to need cards that gain favor. And after you summon a creature, gain three favor. If you play this with things like Bladefly, which summon three copies of the creature when you play it, that gains you nine favor. If you play this with Mugging, Mugging plays three Rogue Skulkers, which again gains you nine favor. Um, anything that summons multiple creatures, if you have this out first, is going to be enormous to gain you lots and lots of favor. Palace's Wand, another infinite durability relic. After you play a magic card, give it plus one durability. And the ability is draw a card, give minus three durability to this relic. So this one only costs two mana to equip. And magic doesn't have like too many relics that are super important. So this can easily be played. Uh, in almost any magic deck, you're going to be drawing extra cards, which is worth it. And it starts with two durability, which makes it a little bit tough uh, to stay equipped, but it's only two mana, so you can easily play another magic card in the same turn. Um, and then it'll have three durability effectively when you play it. So that's a nice one. Uh, Shadow of Lethanon. This guy is just unbelievable. At the end of your turn, this creature gains hidden. At the start of your turn, this creature deals one damage to the opposing god. So unless your opponent has the ability to target hidden creatures uh, with an AoE-type spell, this thing will stick on the board forever. Um, nature has the ability to ping this off right now, and nature is pretty prevalent. But uh, if we ever see Deception getting a little bit of a buff or nature getting a little bit of a nerf, uh, Shadow is going to pop off again. Uh, Pious Giant was recently buffed. If you have 20 favor or more, lose 20 favor and give plus 3, plus 3, and ward to this creature. So if you have 20 favor, this is a 6 mana 9-9 nine, nine with ward. 
this card can basically finish out any aggro deck. It can be your top end. Um, it's just it, how do you deal with a six mana nine nine with ward? You concede. <laughs> There's just nothing else to do. Olympian Guard is uh, going to be very nice for light players. If you drop this on turn one, it needs to be dealt with immediately. Uh, it has frontline at the start of your turn, if, of your opponent's turn. If this creature has two strength or less, give it plus one, plus one. So if you don't deal with it immediately, it's going to be a 3-4 with frontline for two mana on turn one. It just becomes impossible to deal with. And for your opponent, they already have to deal with a 2-3 on turn one, which dealing three damage on turn one is not easy all the time. Um, some gods have the ability to do that, but not all of them. So if you can't deal with this instantly, it's going to spiral out of control. Oreo is um, an interesting card. He's definitely worthwhile in hidden rush decks, but he plays himself to the board as soon as you play another card. So whenever you draw this, it effectively is going to get played onto the board, uh, whether that's at a good time or at a bad time. Um, you don't necessarily want to start with this card in your starting hand because then you're going to play it on turn one. Although sometimes against some gods, that is a benefit. Um, but against other gods, putting this out on turn one is just going to get it killed uh, and it's not going to be able to pick off anything helpful. This has deadly, so its whole purpose is really if you can trade a one mana or really it's a zero mana, it plays for free. Um, if you can use zero mana to kill your opponent's, you know, 10 10 uh then it's a huge value trade for you but if you play it on turn one because you drew it into your starting hand you can't kill a 10 10 with it it's going to die quickly uh, ironclad minotaur is one of the two cards in the set that really are the answer to demogorgons it's a six mana five six with protected so it's got nice stats already and then its roar is give ward to your god which protects you from some deception trickery and it removes sleep from each friendly creature. So if your opponent plays a Demogorgon, you can drop the Ironclad, it wakes up all your creatures, and then you wreak havoc on your opponent. Um, Helia is the other card that uh, wakes all your creatures up. It gives ward to all your other creatures. Uh, it draws you a card, and it gives plus one, plus one to all your other creatures as well. So again, this is going to be a huge card in the future. It's already a huge card right now. This is definitely um, one to pick up once trading goes live. And now we're to the first page, so let's look closer at all these cards here. Uh, we've got Isadora. She has been just crushing people in light decks. She's got backline and ward. At the end of your turn, summon a 1-2 Olympian Guard. The Olympian Guard, of course, is the one that keeps spiraling out of control. Um, so if this can't be dealt with immediately, it becomes a problem. And because it spits out front lines every single turn, you have to kill the front line first and then get to Isadora. So it's a lot to ask for. Um, it's a very nice card. Death Watch Curate, you don't see it played too frequently, but, um, in the future, I think we'll see it more. At the end of your turn, if your god has 15 health or less, heal it for three uh there are some god powers that deal damage to both gods so uh we don't know what the new death god power is going to be for the new champion set so it's hard to know exactly what death is looking like in the future but uh, a five mana five six it's got good stats and uh it's got nice text to boot so you can't complain Caller of the Hunt is ridiculously nice. Uh, it's an Amazon. It's got regen three, so it can work with a lot of different synergy type decks. Its roar is give each of your creatures, after this creature attacks a creature, deal two damage to a random enemy creature. So it effectively buffs all of your creatures. If you can get really wide with Caller of the Hunt, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to keep any cards on the board at that point for your opponent. Ornery Goat is definitely uh, one of the best cards, I think, for a nature to pick up. It's a common card. It's confused at the start of your turn, deal two damage to a random enemy creature. It's a three mana, three, three. Nature doesn't have any three drops right now. 
Like this is effectively it. So if you're looking to build a nature deck, it's also wild and wild has a lot of synergy with a lot of cards. Confused has synergy with a lot of cards. So the ornery goat is definitely one uh, to pick up for nature. Uh, it, it just slots right in at that three, three drop. There's nothing else to put there. You might as well put an ornery goat. It's either that or a three mana vanilla three, four in the hunt warden or a dune calvary. But um, I'd prefer an ornery goat with the wild tag and confuse so you can buff it with gloom druid or some of the wild buffs like trial the hydra. Uh, same goes for Dionysian bull. He's another wild, another regen. So he's got all these synergies. It's confused in front line. It's a big body. It's got regen. It's not as good, in my opinion, as the Black Rhino, which is a 5-8 with Frontline. But uh, it's still a great card if you're looking for the synergy of Confused or Wild. And uh, if you don't have a Black Rhino, this guy is nearly just as good. Um, Dionys was recently nerfed. Uh, it's hard to say what we'll see again for death in the future. There could be a new god power that really helps you get below 15 health and stay below 15 health. This card is only really good if you're below 15 health. If not, it's a 3 mana 2 3, which is really bad. Uh, you could have a 3 mana 3 4. So you really can only play this now if you have less than 15 health. Uh, but then you get to draw two cards. Eh. Lukewarm on that one. Frenzied Ritual, I think is a fluke that it's in the top i don't think this is an important card to pick up skull scepter is good but it has one durability so it, all the weapon removal in the sanctum i would not run this anymore uh, after one of your creatures dies deal one damage to your opponent's god if this sticks it's phenomenal uh, but there's too much weapon removal in the sanctum and your opponent could also just be running weapon removal which means that this card is not going to be as good. Uh, it's high up on the list right now because there was no weapon removal in the Sanctum for the last two weeks, which is the period of time that I'm looking at. Trial of the Hydra is going to be an awesome card. Uh, Trial of the Hydra gives plus regen plus one to each of your wild creatures, then give all of your creatures plus X plus X, where X is their regen amount. You basically... Uh, just win the game if you play trial of the hydra and have multiple wild creatures out they all get regen if they already had regen they get even more regen and then it gives them all plus x plus x so at a minimum all your wild creatures are going to get plus one plus one um this card can just shut your opponent out with your massive creatures with regen in a single turn if you play like blade flies that summons three wild creatures that are all two twos uh, they would then all have regen and plus one, plus one. Uh, if you get some other wild creatures out as well, this pairs well with cards like the Jag Staff, which we'll see in a minute. Um, Archimodian Hydra is just an awesome, fun card. It's my favorite card from the set. Uh, it's kind of a win more card. You kind of need to play it on an empty board. Um, but its roar is summon a 3-2 Hydra Head with regen one. That's this guy over here. And uh, after a Hydra Head dies, summon two of them. So if this dies, you then get two Hydra Heads. If those die, you then get four Hydra Heads. It just spirals out of control. It's a really awesome, fun card. It is wild, so it's got those wild synergies. It's confused, so again, confused synergies as well. Uh, it's just an awesome, fun card to play. I highly recommend this one. Uh, Chiron the Teacher is a regen one so it's got that regen synergy roar randomly give plus one plus one to another of your creatures so it's basically a shield bearer um and give minus one durability to your opponent's relic so it can also get rid of like the skull scepter for instance or a half used jag staff it's not going to do anything really to the infinite durability relics but uh i mean this is basically a shield bearer on crack so it's probably worth slotting these into almost any nature deck uh, undead chimera has been just killing it in the soulburn decks that have been going around but soulburn is going away very shortly so it's hard to say exactly what will happen with undead chimera again death we don't know that new god power for death that's coming out 
and we do know that soul burn is going away so it's hard to say but this is still a nice three five body for four mana and after this creature attacks and roar deal two damage to each god so effectively if you're hitting your opponent in the face with this you're actually dealing five damage um and it's got five health so it sticks nicely does a lot of damage just remains to be seen where this will end up selena's bow is great uh it's another infinite durability relic but it starts with four durability which is just obscene i've seen people playing this have literally 20 durability uh, after you play a nature card give it plus one durability it's also easy to draw nature cards from things like forage or um there's just plenty of cards that delve more nature cards for nature which means you can keep playing more and more nature cards uh, ability deal two damage to a random enemy creature and give minus two durability to this relic uh, that's insane this card is pretty much a must for nature um, so selena champion of nature has backline and ward roar your creatures lose confusion ability deal two damage to an enemy and confuse a random enemy creature so this is just a tough card to deal with it's got backline and ward, so you can't just hit it directly if you have other creatures out, which nature can spam other creatures easily. It's got ward, so it's protected from spells. It's got three, four worth of stats, which is pretty nice. And it can just target anything at once, deal two damage. It's a very nice nature card. Could be even better in the future if some Amazon synergies show up. There's already plenty of Amazon synergies, but maybe there could be more. Cruel Overseer. There are plenty of vanilla 3-mana three 3-4s. Three we already talked about the Dune Calvary and the Hunt Warden. So this is a 3-mana three 3-4, three but also with massive text implications here if you have 15 health or less. It summons two 1-1s. One so for 3-mana, you're summoning 5-6 worth of stats. Uh, and then every single turn, if this isn't dealt with, it just keeps spitting out another uh, two 1-1s. One ones. So this creature can absolutely pop off. And at absolute worst, it's a vanilla 3-mana three 3-4 three, if you play it when you're above 15 health. So this card can easily fit into most death decks. Um, Enchanted Vines, recently buffed. Deal 4 damage to 4 random creatures. Add a random nature card to your hand. This is going to be a staple in all nature control decks from here until eternity. Uh, dealing 16 damage for 6-mana. If your plan is to just not play creatures on your own side of the board uh, and just play lots of spells, it's quite easy to sit back, let them get four creatures out, play Enchanted Vines, remove all their creatures, and you, to boot, you get to add a random nature card to your hand. Uh, buffing your Selena's Bow, by the way. Return to Cave. Uh, recently nerfed. It used to heal for 12. Now it heals for 10. It adds two mana locks to your god, not to your opponent's god, just to yours. And just healing for 10 is insane. Again, it remains to be seen what will happen with Soul Burn going away. Nefru, Champion of Death. When this creature is summoned, deal three damage to each other character. So this wipes the whole board and hits gods as well. Afterlife, if your god has 15 health or less, pull this creature into your hand and permanently reduce its cost by one. This might actually be the best card in the set. Uh, it's just such ridiculous text. It's infinite. You can keep pulling it back, back into your hand. If you combine it with like Return to Cave, Fleshbind, um, other healing cards, just a nibble. Uh, there's plenty of healing cards. Uh... You can just keep pulling this back into your hand, keep playing it, keep wiping their board, keep dealing three damage to their god. And uh, Neferu is going to be strong for a long, long time. Jagstaff has Blitz. After your god attacks, summon a Black Jag. Black Jag is a 3-3 three, three Confused Regen 1. It's a core card. But uh, this card is just ridiculous. It has Blitz, so it immediately impacts the board, which is important. You don't want to play it unless you can use the Blitz ability. If your opponent has any creatures, you shouldn't play this because then they can remove this and you will have just wasted five mana. Um, but if you can immediately play this card and use it, 
it is a five mana deal two damage and summon a black jag black jags are three threes that are confused and have regen one this card is better than your typical two mana creature it's probably more like a 2.25 or more mana creature um and dealing two damage uh maybe that's worth one and a half mana or so uh at the very least you're getting like three mana maybe four mana worth of value out of this on the first turn you play it and if you can then get off the second hit the second turn if your opponent doesn't remove it you're getting like eight mana at least value out of your jag staff and then of course the black jags have synergy with wild and confused and regen so just adding more and more black jags to your board uh, is going to be huge for all of those synergies, making this card just phenomenal in so many different ways. And finally, the number one card in win rate, and also could be the number one card in the set, if not Neferu, is Dionysus the Bountiful. A 9 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. Its roar is add 7 random nature cards to your hand, set their costs to 1, Deal four damage to each enemy character. So that includes your opponent's face. It's going to deal four damage to everything your opponent owns as well. And it adds seven random nature cards to your hand for one mana each. That could include another Dionysus that costs one. Um, if not, you're going to get usually at least two or three very nice cards for one mana. Um, if this doesn't just outright win the game on the spot. This is a must for any nature control decks. Um, it's just a phenomenal finisher. Uh, there's so many reasons that this is a great card. It's also just got huge stats. For 9 mana, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, so if it's not dealt with itself, it gets to hit for 8 damage the following turn. In addition to the fact that your opponent knows that you also have seven one-cost cards in your hand, and the fact that you just probably cleared their entire board and did four damage to their face. So this card is amazing. Definitely one worth picking up. So that's going to do it for the buyer's guide here to all the best cards in the Trial of the God set. Again, IMX launching tonight. Make sure you're there. It's going to be... So exciting to see all these cards finally being able to be bought and sold. And uh, no gas fees on IMX, which is awesome. I believe there will be a 3.75% market fee uh, on IMX. So per transaction, there will be small market fees, but no gas fees. And the gas fees are what have been killing the market for months, years so very exciting so that's going to do it for this one make sure you like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time